Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Logan with West Desert Shooter. I am currently out here sitting at my firing position and I am 1,600 yards away from my target. Now, 1,600 yards is a very long ways. In fact, one mile is 1,760. So I'm only 160 yards short of going a full one mile shot. Today, my goal is to get somewhere around 1,500. This was a convenient location, so we stopped at 1,600. I'm going to be shooting two 6mm Creedmoor rifles today. Uh, real quick, let's cover what 6mm Creedmoor is. 6 Creedmoor is definitely one of my favorite cartridges. It's light recoiling and it shoots very far, very effectively. And honestly, it's a pretty flat, fast shooting cartridge. What a 6mm Creedmoor ultimately is, 6mm bullet, so it's a 243 projectile and then it uses a 6.5 Creedmoor case. The dimensions are all exactly the same, except for the neck has been shrunk down to hold a 6 mil bullet instead of a 6.5. So the weight on the projectiles are 112 grains, and they are traveling out of each of my rifles around 2,950 feet a second. Now for each rifle, I do have a specific hand load worked up for each one. For my American Rifle Company, which is the traditional bolt action style rifle, that one I'm using Reloader 17, but the rifle has a shorter barrel. I use the same amount of powder of both brands in each rifle, so Reloader 17 gives me higher velocity in a shorter barrel in my American Rifle Company. The barrel on the ARC is a 20 inch barrel, and then my Uinta Precision, which is an AR-10 patterned rifle with a bolt action upper, has a 24 inch barrel, but I use H4350 in that one, so it doesn't give me as high velocities. H4350 is known for having a very consistent speed and burn. So one of the great things about both of these rifles is between those two powders, they ended up right at the same speed. They're within five feet a second of each other on average. So let's talk about the optics for each rifle. On top of my American Rifle Company, I have a Tracked Toric Ultra HD. This one's the 34 millimeter ELR MRAD scope. I know that's a crazy long name, but this is a very nice scope. I believe it is a four and a half all the way to 30 magnification. Today at 1600 yards, I'll most likely be shooting somewhere between 15 and 20 power. That's where I like to, I like to have a good field of view when shooting this far. Um, on top of my Uinta Precision Rifle is an Arkin SH4 Gen 2. It is a 6 to 24 magnification. It is also a 34 millimeter tube. It has a zero stop, first focal plane, same as the track. They both have those same features. They are both illuminated and uh, they come in at very different price points. The Tract is a top tier optic. It's a great value for what you're getting. It's very high end, very nice. The Arkin SH4 is more budget minded, so it's built a little bit differently. It has some different glass quality inside it, but it comes in at a scorching 450 bucks. Yes, there is a back order on occasion. However, they are absolutely worth waiting for. I've enjoyed my SH4 Gen 2 quite a lot, actually, even compared to something as nice as my Tract. The Tract is definitely a nicer scope, but depending on your budget, you have some options there. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the breakdown of what's going on today. Now let's get to it. Let's start shooting out to 1,600 yards out here in the desert. Real quick, my target is a full-size Ipsic target, so it's about 18 inches wide and just over 30 inches tall, I believe. Let's see if we can connect with it this far away, almost one mile shot with a six millimeter Creedmoor. I'm very curious to see if my 20 inch barrel can get it done out here. Firing from up on top of a bluff, I do have a cliff edge right down below me, which helps eliminate Mirage. Here we are zooming in on our target at 1,600 yards. The target is equipped with a magneto speed target hit indicator, so as I impact it, it should blink a red flash back at us. All right guys, one really cool feature on this American Rifle Company chassis is it has a bubble level built into the chassis and it can go out in and out of either side. The importance of a bubble level is to keep your rifle level because as you shoot farther out, you've adjusted your scope down and if you can't your rifle left to right, you will actually impact left or right of your target. It's extremely important to have a bubble level for very far shots like this. So our dope is 15 mils. Completely cold bore. All right guys, I'm going to give it a half mil left hold. Impacted right a half mil, hit the bottom edge of the target. Let's hold dead on. I'm gonna hold level with the center of the target again and see if it impacts low again. That was very close, that was awesome.
Okay, I messed up my call there. It's one mil right of target. I held left a half mil on the first shot and it impacted right. So I needed to hold more. Let's bring it up a half. We want it to impact further left, so let's dial left one mil. Let's just get this thing to hold that on. Couldn't tell if it hit right below it because my magneto speed flashed. But I think the dirt impacted the magneto speed and tripped it. Off the left shoulder. Left edge. Impact. That was an impact. Impact. Okay, I think I threw that shot, but I was also out of ammo. I tried to shoot two in a row. Not that bad, um, but we did get a couple on target there. My wind pretty much died off. I was dialed a full mil left, but then I had to hold right a half mil, so it dropped down to a half mil call. Overall, the elevation was pretty good um, within a half mil, so not terrible, but uh, it put me right in the box of where my target is hanging, so I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, this is a very far shot, and it was really close to the target on my first couple shots because this target is not huge for this range. It's moderate. It's an appropriate target for 1600, I would say. Awesome guys, before we send this next string down here, I just want to say be sure to check out the affiliate links down below. I'm going full time on YouTube. Anything purchased through there helps support the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Also follow me on Instagram at West Desert Shooter if you guys are on there. I post up a bunch of different content than what I do on YouTube, so hopefully you'll find something on there that you like. All right guys, now we have our Uinta Precision UPR-10. What these rifles are, are bolt action uppers designed to go on AR-10 lowers. They also have an AR-15 version if that's what you're looking for. So this is my UPR-10. This has their matching upper and lower, their billet receivers, and it's also got their matching handguard out front. Although I put an ARCA rail on the bottom so that I could run my MDT SkyPod up there. Up top we've got the F3R one piece scope mount and then I've got that Arkin SH4 Gen 2 with their precision pack so it has a bubble level on there as well as a throw lever for my magnification ring. I've got this one dialed up to 15 mils and I'm going to go ahead and see where this one lands in comparison to the American Rifle Company. The American Rifle Company ended up having to come up an extra half mil. I just, I'm just curious if I'm going to have to do the same on this gun. So I'm just going to leave it at 15 and see what happens. I do like this big flat cheek piece. It's super comfortable with this rifle setup. I get nice and low here, make sure the mag's clear in the ground. Right up around 18x on the magnification, just like I ran on my tract. The image is definitely darker on the SH4 at the higher magnification than my tract. Not really surprised by that. There's a big difference in price tag here. So, here we go. One thousand six hundred yards dialed up. Check my parallax. Rifle could use a little bit of level right there. That's what I want. Preload it nice and easy. Squeeze the trigger. Just left. That's about the bottom edge of plate. So let's give it a half mil hold right. Let's just dial right a half. Okay. Make sure our rifle's level after cranking on the bolt knob. It still is.
just low. Let's bring it up a half. Hit left. Impact. Bong. Four shots. Right edge. And a hold center. Just low right. Well, not bad that you went to got in there and uh, I mean, I kind of was messing around shooting it faster like that. This does have a much lighter profile barrel, so it's probably heating up pretty good, especially shooting it quickly like I was. Big shout out to you went to Precision. Those guys are based out of Utah. They've been really awesome to work with on all of their projects. This rifle right now is so damn sweet. They got the concept down on their Gen 1s and then they made them pretty and now they are just awesome, highly functioning, super fast, badass Precision rifles. And they go right onto your AR pattern rifles. So you already use all your same stock, trigger, grip, all that stuff. Just pin the upper on, you're ready to rock and roll. And this gun can go right back to a semi-auto with two push pins. You just put your semi-auto back on top and you're ready to rock and roll. All right, guys, we are back here at our target, 1,600 yards away. These things don't make much of a splat out here, so let's take a look. Definitely got an impact here. And then there's something going on here. Something knocked off my black paint, so I'm thinking that's a impact there. Uh, there may or may not be one or two more tucked away in the black paint. It's hard to tell, but uh, what's really cool, once you get this far away, you can find projectiles that have actually impacted the dirt or even the target and uh, get yourself a nice little memory from uh, when you went out and shot 1600 yards. Well, all right, guys, I greatly appreciate you watching this video. If you guys could do me a huge favor, like and comment. And then also, this is the biggest one, share the video with your buddies. YouTube just is not sharing these videos anymore. They've made it very clear that they hate gun videos. So be sure to show them that there are shooters out there that wanna see them. So send them to your buddies. Let's get these views up, because honestly, in the past six months, YouTube has strangled my channel so bad, it just does not get out there and get the views that I normally do. And I know that this is the kind of content that always got me views in the past. I'm confident it's YouTube because there's so many new gun owners there. Why wouldn't there be more views on gun channels right now? Until next time, guys, I greatly appreciate you watching. Again, check the affiliate links down below. It's how you can support me right now because I'm going full time on YouTube. I would really appreciate it. We will see you guys in the next one.